This piece by James Jean is pretty impressive, just like this one. But what if we compare the two? Which artwork do you like more? The left one or the right one? Most people will probably go for the left one, but can't really explain why. Hey, Dr. Draw Alex here. And today we'll take a look at why the left artwork is more attractive and how you can use this trick to make your work more appealing. If you're an aspiring artist, you probably know that a drawing like this seems simple, but actually means someone masters perspective, proportions, form, anatomy, silhouette, gesture, and much more. With so many skills out there, it's hard to know where to start. And it makes us wonder, what is the most important art skill to master? Is there one skill you can use in photography, drawing and painting, and even use in portraits, landscape, figurative and abstract art? The answer is yes, and that is composition. Composition might make you think about music where an old man stands in front of an orchestra waving his magic wand to make everything work together. Well, composition is something that is used in every art form, meaning it's also used in the visual arts. You've probably seen this framework, the golden spiral, or this framework, the golden triangles, or this one, the rule of thirds. All these frameworks guide our eyes around the canvas and an artist can use these to place the objects of interest or vocal points. For example, if we use the rule of thirds on this artwork by James Jean, we see the arms are aligned with the top horizontal line of the framework. The bluebird sits very close to the cross section on the bottom right. And most importantly, the centered column contains most of what's going on in the scene. And this technique is also used in film and video. It's common to have most of the action happen in the center of the screen. If we look at this epic scene in Akira and overlay the outer two columns, we still see most of what's going on. Even if we go as far as overlay all the boxes except the middle one, we still get 80% of what's going on in the scene. Filmmakers do this so our eyes won't have to go all over the screen to see what's going on. Imagine having to turn your head with every scene, that would be very tiring. But let's go back to these two art pieces. We know why the left one is working, but why is the right one off? Well, the objects of interest or vocal points are here and here, the two characters. If we use the rule of thirds framework again, you'll see it doesn't really align with the characters, especially the character on the right is so close to the edge, it just doesn't work. But that's because this art piece is actually way bigger, in which the characters are fully portrayed. Now, if we add the rule of thirds, you'll see all the characters fit within a column. The central column attracts most of our attention because of the flowered figure. Also, the head of this flowered figure aligns with the left bottom cross section, and the head of this turtle aligns with the right bottom cross section. It all just makes a lot more sense. All right, that all seems easy. Just use a simple framework to compose your elements. But how do we use this framework? Are there certain rules that we should follow? Again, the answer is yes. But to explain that, we're gonna do a quick visual experiment with a blank page. If we add a black dot, our eyes are instantly pulled to this black dot. Even if I place it here or here, your eyes go there even if you don't want to. That's because this black dot creates contrast with the white background. The higher the contrast, the stronger our eyes are pulled to that point. For example, if I place a gray dot over here, the black dot with the higher contrast grabs our attention more, which is why many animals develop a way to reduce contrast, which helps them blend in with the background and increase their chances of survival. Yep, this black dot pulls our eyes because it has to do with survival. But what if we duplicate this black dot and increase the contrast even more by adding some color? Now we're more prone to look at the colored dot which is also used in nature by flowers. They use colors to attract the attention of bees, so their pollen are distributed and they reproduce. Again, this has to do about survival, but how can we attract the attention of humans even more? By drawing a house. Imagine walking in the desert for days, you find a house, you'd be prone to go there, right? That's because a house means shelter. Shelter from weather, shelter from dangerous animals, shelter from Dr. Draw. But there's one thing that instantly captures our attention even more than a house. Do you have an idea what it is? It's a 
face. A face instantly captures our attention because we're social animals, meaning we need other people to survive. And thus we're pretty good at reading faces. What I'm saying is that whatever object you choose to draw can be categorized on a scale from grabbing our attention to instantly grabbing our attention. All right, so on the one hand, we've got a framework we can use to arrange our objects. And on the other, we've got a skill that rates the attention of an object. Can we use these together? Yes. Let's say we categorize objects as red, very attention grabbing, blue, somewhat attention grabbing, or yellow, minimal attention grabbing. And let's use those tools to analyze this drawing by my favorite artist, Kim Jong Gi. The first thing we look at, like we just saw, is the head. Secondary, this little dude underneath. And thirdly, this hand. Let's align them using the compositional framework. Then around his suit, we see a naked girl, another one next to it, and another one upside down showing her, uh, well, let's make her red. Again, lines to align. We have another hand. Hands show us a lot of expression, so we tend to look for them. A signature and a print number, some lines, and some finishing touches. Now, if we make the background white, this looks pretty close to a Mondrian. Mondrian is known for creating minimalistic paintings, just using the primary colors and some vertical and horizontal black lines. I remember the first time seeing his work and questioning myself, why is this dude so famous? My dad used to speak very highly of him, but I couldn't understand why. It looks so freaking simple. I mean, I could produce something like this. And that's exactly why his work is so admired and has inspired Nike, L'Oreal, interior design, and quite frankly, changed society. It's like Mondrian is showing us the truth of art without the aesthetics. It's almost like an X-ray. Everybody thinks they can produce the same thing, but nobody before him could articulate this. Once I realized this, I was like, damn, this guy with his Hitler mustache is a fucking genius. I even heard a story. He was so obsessed with his work and simplifying things. His friends were like, this guy needs some time off. So they sent a prostitute over to his studio. The prostitute entered and when she looked at his work, she found it was so weird she couldn't do her job and she had to leave. Kim Jong Gi and Mondrian are completely different artists and use a different style, but they use the same principle to express themselves and align with an audience. And that's what composition is. So how can you as an artist use composition? Well, as beginning artists, we don't know that something simple actually requires loads of skills. We think that something simple is easy to make. So when we sit down and start to make a drawing, we expect ourselves to draw with all those fundamentals like anatomy, form and perspective. But if you're new to those fundamentals, they take up a lot of space on your working memory and you're kind of overloading your brain, which can make you feel quite stressed. When I was a beginner, I used to do this all the time. Whenever I had a great idea, I would instantly aim for a finished illustration. Like I did in this drawing. I made this when I was a kid and started with the orc and later added a cup of beer and an apple because it felt so empty without anything around him. I didn't really think about what the drawing was about before I started it. If you just want to doodle around and not really think about what you're drawing, it's totally okay. But if you want to tell a story or express something, it's good to think about what you want to express before saying it. And that's composition. So the next time you sit down, ask yourself what you want to draw and what it should look like. And just focus on composition. Composition is nothing more than taking some time to explore your ID and experiment. It could look like this. A page on which I just jotted down some IDs. I did a couple of thumbnails, played with perspective and picked a color scheme. This page might look like rubbish, but it gave me the confidence to draw this. When you've done some experimenting, composition will shrink and you can take it to the next step, like shading or form. Just like an orchestra, not all the instruments are playing at the same time, but the conductor is always guiding and making sure all the parts work together. You could say he's the framework and the notes that everybody is looking at to play their part is the composition. Now Mondrian is seen as a highly influential artist and whenever somebody sees the primary colors and black lines, we think of him. But it took him some time to get there. His first work was pretty realistic. He painted rural life and landscapes and more and more he started to focus his paintings 
around trees. And he got obsessed with branches. He painted so many, he started to see a rhythm or algorithm in how the branches grew. Slowly but steadily, this algorithm became the fundamental theme of his work, and he started to go even more abstract, but always following a few rules. Only horizontal and vertical black lines, and the three primary colors. It's easy to judge him for his simplicity, but it took him a couple of decades to understand that reality is less important than simplicity. So the next time you have an ID for an illustration, give yourself some time to explore the ID and find a composition that attracts the attention of your audience. Then you'll feel more confident and you don't need anyone to tell you what to draw or how to draw it. Now, if you like this and you want more artistic tips, be sure to check out my Patreon. But for now, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about it and stay diggity drawing. Adios. Aspective. Someone masters aspective. I just got a Thai massage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that shit is good. You should get one too. Ta-da!